Well, uh, moving on uh, to a story and a very interesting one because during her media briefing this week, the Minister of International Relations and Cooperation, uh, Minister Linwe Sisulu, said that the debate on a decision taken by the previous administration to withdraw South Africa's membership at the International Criminal Court or the ICC will be revisited. Now, she said that the country might consider uh, staying on if the country's voice is heard. So to talk more about about this and other issues, of course, pertaining to human rights on the African continent. We are joined from our parliament studios by Ngabayomzi Kwankwa, who is chairperson of the African Parliamentarians Association for Human Rights. Uh, thanks so much for coming through this morning and speaking to us. No, thank you. Good morning and good morning to the viewers at home. Thanks for having us, uh, Sakina. Be before we even get into the minister's um, utterances this week, AFRIPA, what exactly is this organization about and uh, what is its vision? Well, it's an organization. We're a network of young parliamentarians. There's about 80 of us from Africa, all over Africa. We seek to promote democracy and human rights on the continent because we feel that as young people, we need to take it upon ourselves to do something about some of the challenges that are facing the continent. You have a rise in the number of des despotic regimes on the continent. You have a number of countries around the continent where presidents try to manipulate their term limits in office because they want to prolong their stay in office. You have a number of countries around the continent, including Sudan, for example, where there are gross human rights violations, and they continue while uh, continental bodies such as the AU and, the, and regional bodies such as SADC decide to turn a blind eye to this issue. So we're saying as young people that we need to use our platforms, parliament in particular, to try and advocate for these issues, to try and make sure that we hold our governments to account in our respective countries about some of these issues that are taking place on the continent. And we use AFRIPA then, therefore as a platform to empower, to capacitate young people, to also help them, uh, these young parliamentarians, so that they can be effective in their jobs in their respective countries. Masse, it sounds uh, very interesting, very woke, but what is your relationship then with organizations like the African Union and uh, the Pan-African Parliament as well? Look, these are institutions that uh, in the long, medium to long term we seek to, through the programs and the work that we do, uh, we want to, to, to make sure that they're effective in their role. So we are not uh, an extension of the AU, nor are we an extension of the Pan-African Parliament, but what we seek to do is to have some kind of a relationship with them, because our view is that if you look at the AU, for instance, it's made up of the very same leaders that commit these human rights violations on the continent, so you can't allow yourself to be an extension of that institution, but what you seek to do as a parliamentarian and as a public representative is to find ways of using uh, whatever channels that are available to you, including your parliaments, to hold these leaders to account for what, some of the things they do on the continent, but to also try to influence the, the, the decision-making processes of these institutions. We raise a number of issues when we're not happy. Recently, we engaged, for example, with the Human Rights Commission at the AU, saying, trying to find out whether they had investigated some of the human rights violations on the continent, and if yes, what were the outcomes of those investigations, and if no, what were the reasons or the reasons why they haven't considered uh, doing proper investigations on some of the issues which were raised to us by our, our members within Africa who are, who are part and parcel of, of these member states on the continent. Some of those people, for example, came from Burundi, citing some of the human rights violations that took place before the, the referendum which took place in May, saying people were brutalized, people were killed, people were forced to actually vote in a particular way during that referendum. So with that narrative as a backdrop, you know, that backdrop of strong men uh, dictators in some instances uh, who are, as it were, in charge of the African continent, uh, we also know how most people feel about the ICC saying that it is biased and uh, seems to only go after African leaders for prosecution. So given that, you have the Minister of International Relations this week saying, as South Africa, we might just review withdrawing from that organization. What was your immediate response to that? Well, when we had a regional symposium uh, last weekend in Malawi, on the sidelines of those discussions, it's one of the issues actually I was asked by a, a, a journalist in Malawi who was saying, but you come here as South Africans, you come here, you want to tell us about human rights issues and yet your country is considering. In fact, took a decision last year to withdraw from the IEC, from the ICC rather. 
look, even when, as we're debating this matter in Parliament last year, we made it clear as the United Democratic Movement that it was an irrational decision on the basis of the fact that we felt that the first step naturally in, situa naturally in situations where things go wrong is to try and reform the institution from within. And once all else has failed, you can then take a decision to say you're drawing. But we felt at the time that the ANC was being irrational, the African National Congress government was also being irresponsible in the manner in which it did that. Imagine taking a decision to say the Roman statute, which was adopted in 1998 and came into effect in 2002, you say you are withdrawing from it when you have a human rights record in Africa that is one of the best, when your entire international relations, in fact, your entire foreign policy is since 1994 has been built on the basis of the promotion and the respect of, for human rights on the continent. And now you also have countries like Burundi. Remember, after we made that announcement, we're immediately supported and backed up by Burundi. Who is Burundi? And Sudan, they said, we're also going to join South Africa. It makes it difficult for us who are human rights activists to do our work on the continent. So we welcome this decision and we are hoping that the, the African National Congress government will say that we'll consider all these issues but also develop a plan to say how do we then influence the reform of the ICC because the fact of the matter is they cannot continue to do what they are doing where they pick on Africa where African leaders and Africa as a continent become soft targets. They turn a blind eye to other violations around the world where it's actually, uh, they happen in first world countries. There needs to be a fair and a balanced approach now they deal with these matters. We thought when we said, if they were to do this thing as a last resort, we said we're using the boogeyman approach as a party when we're discussing this matter to say the ICC itself does need to be seen as a credible institution. It needs to be believable to the public. And, and, and that entails having countries which have a human rights, good human rights record like South Africa to be part and parcel or to be signatories of the ICC. So we're saying use that process, try to tell them that if you don't reform, if you don't change, if you don't treat everyone fairly, then we might consider withdrawing. But the decision to say that this decision is going to be re re revisited is a very important one. Actually, it's a very rational decision. We want to encourage it. Mabayomzi Kwankwa, thanks so much for your time this morning. And uh, that, of course, uh, giving us some insight into AFRIPA, which is an organization uh, started by young parliamentarians here on the African continent. And they are very much aware of some of the human rights violations, many of them, and trying to do something about them. Let's get to a break.